Much more to come in just a moment, including the head football coach, Kalani Satake. Coach, welcome on a crazy day. <laughs> I mean, just a crazy day. We're having fun. I can't, how come you guys didn't include me in your, in your star system with eating and all that? Um, we'll get on that. Okay. We'll get on that. You we, know, we just rated Ed Lamb a superstar because he wears cowboy boots occasionally around the offices. So He claims they're comfortable, but nothing's <laughs> more comfortable than flip-flops. This is true. That is true. You can't get any more comfortable. True. You know what, Kalani? It's almost barefoot. Normally, three guys on TV wearing the same shirt would be weird. Not today. Not in royal. Not, not in royal blue. <laughs> it's a big day. It is. I like you noticed that. That's nice. <laughs> There's only one of us with a 3X on, though. <laughs> I know it's because Shep never he, he skips leg day, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kalani Satake with us on BYU Sports Nation. Uh, I know that you have a well deserved few vacation days coming up after another intense recruiting period. Um, but let's let's dive in uh, on this day. As you look back, if there were a uniform message that you give to all of these guys coming into BYU football, what, what is it that you're pitching as uh, a BYU football head coach to these guys that are considering coming to the Y? Well, they, they already know what's, what to expect here, and, and um, it's why we have such a great retention rate for our guys that come on visits and uh, end up signing with us, and, and even preferred walk-ons that come on visits and committing to us. Um, and uh, it's because of the, the campus itself, it just sells itself. And I know um, there's a lot of credit and praise goes to the coaches and the ones that do the recruiting, but um, it's actually the draw of the school, this university that, that these kids are interested in, whether they're LDS or not, you know, and, and the... the the football part is just is just an added bonus for them. But uh, there's a lot of young men out there that want this type of lifestyle, and then they want the challenge in academics and, and to live a disciplined life. And then they also love the, the opportunity to play football. And so we have um, a wonderful group, and I think the, the, the main ambassadors of this group are the, are the players on our team. And they, they uh, inform the, the, the kids on, the, on their visits that – uh, what BYU is all about, just to make sure that if it hasn't been confirmed by the coaches. And um, but uh, you know, looking at everything that that goes on here, the things that you guys do with BYU, the the um, excitement that they the kids get on on social media from all our fans everywhere. It's the the draw of BYU. It really is, it's extend it extends way more than just the head coach and and the, and the assistants that do the recruiting. The recruiting takes place uh, way before that, and and it continues to carry on. And so, um, you know, with our fan base, with our, our faculty, our staff here, and everyone that's involved with, with um, and get, gets excited about adding to this family. We'll, we'll certainly get into some specifics about the class, but from an overall perspective, what's your impression of this class? Well, I mean, I think every coach is really excited on, on signing day. I, I'm excited for more than just the football part of it. I mean, these, uh, we, we try to check into a, a guy's heart and how much passion they have for the game and how much, they, how much passion they have for the future in their life, you know. And so um, these are all really good kids that, that come from great families, and, and not all of them are the same. They, they have different, uh, you know, d diverse backgrounds, but um, they're all centered around uh, um, the main thing, which is having Christ in their life, you know, and, and then seeing the benefit that could, that could happen from being here at BYU. And so um, I'm excited about the young men that they are, but the men that they're going to be. You know, and then just happy that, that I'm here uh, through that process and that I have a part in, in, in helping them go through that transition and that really BYU is going to be such a huge key for them in their life. I think Tom mentioned it when he opened up the signing day that this will, this will change their life and, it, and they know it and it will be all for the better. And this is kind of right in line with what their parents already raised them to do. You know, whether they have one parent or both at home or none, they were raised and built this way to, to – to go through a program like BYU and, and a university like BYU and have success. And uh, I'm excited to see how they how they come out in the next four years or six years for some of them. And it's going to be a lot of fun. This is your fourth year recruiting as the head coach at BYU. And in speaking with some of your assistants and some of the staff members that are in the football offices, there's this idea that while people know about BYU and the missions and aims and all that, they feel like you as a collective staff are telling the story about BYU better to these recruits so that they know – more specifics of what to expect, how to transition uh, on a, in a more quickly, um, I guess, in a quicker timeline. Mm -hmm. um, what can you tell us about telling the story better and helping those guys transition uh, at a more rapid pace compared to the first few years that you were here? Well, I mean, I think the, the most important part this is this how we've always done recruiting here is just to really tell them what it's all about, the meat of it right away, you know, what BYU is all about. And, um, I, I've heard people in, in sales tell me that our sales technique is not the best. Um, well, this isn't really a sales job. We're just trying to find the best fit 
for everyone. And we're trying to filter more than, than try to sell, you know. And um, if you have to sell a kid to come to school here when there's others that would die to be here, right, those are the ones that we want. And, and, and uh, they probably don't show up on star system or whatever the rankings, but there's a lot of people that we recruit that, that we feel can fit this program and fit the school. And, and I think it's, it's being up front from the beginning and, and telling them how it is. You know, it's like, it's um, basically how I dated my wife when I first met her. I said, this isn't going to get any better, <laughs> but I'll work really hard to make it right. <laughs> it's uh, about finding the right fit, man. Yeah, and then, I mean, maybe it's not great in sales, but you find you find that you can connect with young men and, and, and with their families, and you can really see what they're all about. And there's something about the measurement of a heart and passion that, that you can't put a star system to. And, and so those are the guys that I'm looking to get on the field and, and make big plays for us. The winning part will happen, right? And it's just getting people that fit as a team, and that's what we're trying to do. And, and I think uh, being up front and telling them what BYU is all about, for some, it, ch it chases them away, the academics, the lifestyle, and, and football. It's hard here, so, um, but there's so, much, there's so much reward and that it takes way longer than as much time as we have in the show to show. All you have to do is look at the alumni that have come through the school and through this pro football program, and you can see the success that it, it provides for these young kids. There was a new wrinkle added to the recruiting process this year with the early signing period. You've mm -hmm. now gone through that. You're obviously here at this point today. Looking back on it, what type of dynamic, how did it change the dynamic of recruiting now that you look back on that? Well, I think it's it's better because we can get guys locked up, and it doesn't allow um, it lets them have a good a good break, you know, during, during the holiday season, and it doesn't allow other teams to kind of slide in in the last second recruiting, um, and so we we got I think it was 14 yeah. that that signed, and they were just they enjoyed it. Jacob Conover is one of them. He went and played an All Star game and focused on getting his mission call and and getting ready for his mission, you know, and and um, so you, you saw him. He's a, a lot really relaxed and he looked like he's already set apart to go on his mission right now but um just having those guys having the comfort of just knowing that it's done has been really an added bonus but for us it allows recruiting kind of speed up a little bit and then we can also um, use more of our visits to get preferred walk-ons on trips on campus and i think it's important i get 123 spots on our roster and i think it's important that i recruit as many as i can i only get 85 scholarships that sounds like a lot but if I'm only choosing my depth chart from 85, then it's not very smart when I can choose from 123. And if I'm going to choose from 123, it'd be nice to recruit as many of those as I can. Right, and we won't hit specifically the preferred walk-ons because those aren't compliant just yet. But we can say this, generally speaking, you have had an emphasis there. And, and compared to years previous, at least in your head coaching tenure, this seems to be the best class of preferred walk-ons that you've had to work with. Yeah, and and... and I mean, all these young men have turned down scholarships to other places. And, um, you know, we, we've had a, a really great success rate with with uh, players that have been walk-ons. And um, I feel like the, the, some of those have slipped through, the, through our fingers when we could have just brought them on campus and shown the benefits of being here. And the, the hard part is that they'd have to pay for school. And it's important that I do what I can to get them scholarships. So it's easy for me now. Um, there's a number of preferred walk-ons that we brought on last year that we're going to put on scholarship, you know. And and uh, as I go through the recruiting process, our rec our signing list should be shorter. It should be a smaller list, but our our award awarding the preferred walk-ons on the team should go higher, and our preferred walk-on list should get longer. So that's I think that's a better way to do it. I'd rather recruit a young man that's on on the program for a year or two, that have has already sacrificed a lot more, and then award him a scholarship, and then keep recruiting and and trying to. Get, get a machine going with the, with the preferred walk-on. Yeah, and if he's uh, turning down scholarships from other programs, uh, I guess you clearly know that he wants to be at BYU. Oh, yeah, and you think it's going to matter? You think uh, when he's running down on kickoff, you think it matters more to him than anyone else? Of course, I think it's important for us on the team to make sure. You, right now, if you walk through the locker room, you couldn't tell who was a preferred walk-on and who was a scholarship kid. And that's great, right? I just wish the NCAA would give me 123 scholarships. That'd be great. So, uh, but there's a there's a huge benefit for why these young men are choosing BYU, and it's the network, it's the connection, it's the things that that BYU offers. But um, it's important that I make sure that it's worth it for them in the long run, you know. And that's whether if it's a future uh, scholarship or if it's just making sure that um, the depth chart reflects the best guys play. I mean. Dax Milne and Bracken L. Bakery, those guys started for us. They're preferred walk-ons, you know, and um, I'm, I'm just thankful that I have a coaching staff that will just choose the guys that are the best and, and not have to limit themselves to only the scholarship guys that are available. 
and it's one of the interesting parts about signing day for for you and the coaches is not only do you get the signees from this class, but you get some signees from previous classes coming back from missions. You know, you you get several players coming back for this year's roster. I mean, one of the guys uh, that would be back in time for springs, Chaz Ayu. Yeah, and so and, and, and you know, some of these guys have gone on the missions right away, and yeah. others are are returning um, after being here for a year or a season. So we're excited to have him. I mean, Chaz is a guy that has has a lot of experience and played a lot for us. And he, I believe, he got hurt in the Mississippi State game um, his freshman year. But um, we're looking to get these guys back in the fold and, and getting them in shape. And um, you know, th we'll have to space them out a little bit because it depends on how many guys extend or uh, when they're when they're done with their when they're with their missions. But um, the timing will work out itself. I'm just glad that they they were able to go serve the Lord and and sacrifice. I mean, that's the other benefit we get guys that in their prime part of their life have, have paid for an opportunity to go help others. So imagine the type of teammates that are coming back uh, that we get added to this group. Now, you told us uh, back in December the linebacker was a position you're, you're concerned about. But <clears throat> when we look at some of these guys between Chaz Ayu and Ben Bywater and Solofo Funa, how do you feel about the linebacker position with the return missionaries, not to mention Michael Daly coming from Lone Peak and, and just the overall group there? Yeah, and then Keenan Peely, Alex Miskella, Preston Lewis, these return missionaries. You know, you mentioned Ben Bywater and, and Funa and Chaz. And so the, there's a, a good group. I, uh, I think the, and the, you got to remember that Zane Anderson comes back, so he, he'll, be, he'll be good to go. And um, really saw the emergence of, of, um, of Isaiah Kafusi, who's become a really good leader for our team and our defense. And so I, I guess the concern is that there's not a lot of experience there. But we'll be okay. I mean, there's a lot of guys to choose from that I think will add, add to the mix. And there's kids that are on the team right now that I really, I'm really excited about. How has social media changed the landscape of recruiting? Has it has it changed it for the the better? Well, I don't know. I, I, so I I do a limited part of social media, and right? I know that you have to have it. It's like um, I don't know. I guess it's a necessity. But I, I I filter out the negative stuff. I'm a positive guy, so I I. I uh, do it to stay in touch with recruits, and, and that's about it. I, everyone has an opinion, and, and I, I'm not really interested in knowing everyone's opinion. Oh, you've, you've noticed, huh? <laughs> yeah, but I, I, well, I noticed. You don't even I, need to ask for it. They're willing no. to give everybody, you know. Yeah, and, 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 the, and the, you know, but I, I, hey, listen, I'm not going to complain about social media. All I'm going to say is that I understand it, and I get it. Um, I'm, I'm a positive guy, and so I'm going to try to be around positive people and positive things. So if you want to be uh, you want to see me on social media, be more positive and be more positive to others, you know? So uh, I, I get it. I, it's part of life, I guess. But I, last thing people need to see is me on on their phones more, you know? And I just, the only thing I have a problem with people that take pictures of their food all the time. It's like, <laughs> show off. Just eat hungry. it. Yeah, yeah, come <laughs> on. Just eat it. I, if, if it's really that good, I wouldn't even take a picture. I just eat it. I, I don't want to pull out my camera and take a picture of it. So. <laughs> It's go time. It's time to eat this thing. Yeah. No, no, it's a, it's a hot take on, on food pictures on Instagram, I, and I like it. The one thing I'll say, though, about social media is it's, it's a good way to see how connected our fans are and how much they care. And so I love the fact that, that our fans are out there and they're engaged with our recruits and everything. And, um, you know, I, I think uh, just for me personally, I don't have a lot of time for it, you know, with all the eating and everything. <laughs> <laughs> one, of, one of the things, though, that we've seen, I think social media has helped with this, is the recruits themselves – recruiting other players to come play with them. That, mm -hmm. that seems over the last couple of years to become more and more prominent. Yeah, the great part about it is connecting so easily, yeah. right? And, and being able to, um, to tell someone about somebody. And recruiting for us in social media has been really nice because people can just, hey, there's this kid in my ward that, you know, take a look at him. And so I think I, when I first got the job, I put this plan to call all the members to help us recruit. And it's been awesome. And I say, just keep doing it, you know? And Keep in mind that we can only sign 25 is a limit, and depending on how many scholarships we have available. And uh, but with the preferred walk-on part, we can really open it up a little bit more. Um, even then, there's only 38 walk-ons on our team that can play, and we had a tryout and brought some guys on, you know, from uh, earlier this week. So uh, we, we've we've seen the benefit of having guys that want to be at BYU that would do anything they could just to run down on kickoff. All right, Coach, great insight into uh, signing day and uh, some new approaches uh, with uh, preferred walk-ons and handling return missionaries and the new signees. This is definitely a unique position in college football that you sit in and having to balance so, so a seven-year seven hey, window. Don't, don't get it twisted, though. It's so much fun. You know, it, 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 I'm not going to sit here and complain about it because I love every second of it. 
and I'm just honored to, to be able to do it. And uh, to others, it may seem really difficult. I just think it's so much fun getting to meet people and and meet their families and connect with others like you like you guys and, and being able to you know uh, make fun of Jerem because he's not here and all that <laughs> stuff. But, uh, I just I love being around here. I love being around the fans. I love the people that are around BYU sports and. And that includes Sports Nation. So thank you very much for helping us out and connecting all of us. Yeah, you bet. And thank you. Uh, refrain from posting food if you want social media interaction with me. Kalani. Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen a bad picture of a Big Mac. So. <laughs> I may have posted a burrito one time. Yeah, I'm, really, I'm feeling really bad about it now. <laughs> that's all I'm going to get now. Because I said that, all I'm going to get is just people are going to tag pictures, me with food. food. Pictures, yeah. food pictures. Uh, I just opened it up. I will be out. I'll be in social media fast for the next two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay positive, my friend. I will. Okay. Thanks, Thanks, guys. <laughs>